Good morning, brothers and sisters, lighters. Both in Lighthouse, Tampines and Woodlands and those who join us online this morning, God bless you. Miracle service is finally starting on site next Saturday. There will be the segment, Healing of the Soul of the Mind and also Healing of the Spirit that is the altar call for salvation. And we will pray for the sick. So if you know of family members, loved ones and friends who need the touch of the Lord, Bring them to come to Tampanese and Woodlands Centre next Saturday on the 4th of June. Praise the Lord. Shall we give the Lord a clap offering? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Bring a friend next Saturday. At the start of this year, we sense that the Lord is moving in our church in a special way. This year is the year of transformation. And the Spirit of God is moving. And we ask the Lord to touch us, transform lives, and heal our emotions. As I seek the Lord, I sense that Jesus says, Come, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Shall we just welcome the Holy Spirit? Lord, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come and do what only you can do. Lord, heal us, touch us, transform life, reconcile relationship. Thank you, Lord. Shall we just welcome the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Let's say together, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Amen. In this month, we... We have this series, God Move in Our Home. And during the four Sundays parallel to this, we have dedicated unto the Lord on the 1st of May, women who fear the Lord on the 8th of May, how to resolve family conflicts on the 15th of May. And last Sunday, we have the principles of mutual submission. Today, I'm going to speak on experiencing God's victory in our family. Let us stand and read God's word in Ephesians chapter 5, 22 to 28 and Ephesians chapter 6, 1 to 4. Shall we read together? For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the saviour of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husband, this means love your wife just as Christ loved the church. He gave his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wife as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Honour your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honour your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, Bring them up with the discipline and instruction can comes from the Lord. Let us sit in the presence of God. I would like to start off with remembering a very popular movie that is launched in 1994. Many of us will remember the movie Forrest Gump. It's a story 
of a simple man and how he viewed the world around him through the experience that he had. And in this story, I would like to highlight the friends that Forrest Gump have. One of his friends is Bubble. Bubble is his best friend in the army. They went to Vietnam War together. Bubble cannot talk about anything else but his dream of being the stream boat captain that after the war, he would become a stream boat captain. Unfortunately, Bubba died in the war and Forrest Gump fulfilled his dream and named his company as Bubba Stream Company. Another friend that he has is Lieutenant Dan Taylor. He grew up in a family with a tradition that every generation, there's someone who died in the American war. And Dan thinks that his destiny is to die in a war and become a war hero. When during the Vietnam War, there was an ambush by the Viet Cong, and Forrest saved Dan's life, even though he lost both his legs. Dan was so disappointed because he thought, that's the end. He will never fulfill his dream of becoming a war hero. Finally, there's this Jenny. Jenny is Forrest's childhood sweetheart. Her mother died when she was only five, and her father raised her and her sister. However, her father molested her and her sister. He was later arrest, arrested and she was sent to live with, his, with her grandmother. As a result, Jenny was always looking for validation and chasing after the latest trend. She moved from one relationship to another and always making the wrong choices because she would choose people who mistreat her. At the end of the story, Jenny became Mrs. Forrest and gave birth to his son. We know the story due to the fact that Forrest was intellectually challenged. He had an IQ of only 75. His mother taught him many things, but in a new, unique way, in the way he could understand the world around him. For example, she taught him, stupid is as what stupid does. And don't let anyone say that they are better than you. Of course, the famous line that we all know, my mama says, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're gonna get. And true to this in the movie, Although, as a child, Forrest was being picked on and bullied because he's born with a weak spine and have to wear leg braces. And he had a low IQ, so he was always picked upon. However, we, we, we knew that at the end, he became a successful businessman owning a stream company and also was awarded many medals, like the Medal of Honor for his heroism during the war. So why do I bring up this story? Because life are full of ups and downs. And sometimes we may experience good times, at other times we experience storm and trials. In a congregation like ours, where so many of us gather together, we come from different family background. When we talk about family relationships and marriage, every one of us have different experiences. And the good and bad experience kind of shape us and cause us to be who we are, how we view relationships and how we look at the world. So today I'm going to speak upon the subject, experience God's victory in our family. Number one, structure of the family is about submission. 
You know, uh, this, this time when I prepared the sermon, I was looking at some uh, Facebook posts. There's one Japanese man who posts on the Facebook describing the difficulties that Japanese men experience. He talked about a young man marrying a young woman. In Japan, you know, young Japanese girls are kind of cute and sweet, and they have these crooked teeth. They call it uh, yaiba. Yaiba is very popular among the celebrities. They even go to the dentist to make their teeth crooked because it is a sign of youthfulness and natural beauty. So the Japanese boy fall in love with the girl, and then they got married. After married, and especially when the, when, 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 uh, after the honeymoon, then they realize, how come my wife becomes so demanding? Where's your money? How's your work? Where do you go? Who are your friends? And so on. Then years pass by as the children come along, then the woman become a tyrant, so controlling, and like an empress dowager. No wonder many Japanese, friend, um, Japanese men stay at work until very late and go out drinking with their friends. Remember Forrest Mama says, life is like a box of chocolate. And so I say, marriage is also like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Boy meet girl and fall in love and get married. And in the end, some turn out to be well. However, others are not so well, whether for the man or for the woman. And here we see that in Ephesians chapter 5, it talks about mutual submission. Today, uh, we are going to talk about this submission in the light of the structure of the family. God has instituted the marriage so that it will function and man and woman will give birth to children and the children will be brought up in the knowledge of the Lord. The order of the family gives meaning in line of accountability, responsibilities, decision-making and it gives stability to the family and allow it to function normally in a healthy way. Husband and wife have different roles and responsibilities. Husband are the head of the family. Some say that if the husband is the head, then the wife is the neck that turns the head. So what is submission? One of the pictures of submission is like two persons that fall into a ditch. The ditch is just a two person's height. One of them have to bend down and lift up the other. If they keep on arguing, no, why me? Then they will stay in the ditch for a very long time. So why does the Bible tell us wife submit to the husband and husband is the head of the wife? Because somebody have to take accountability and take responsibility of the ultimate decision. Obedience is about the action, but submission is concerned with the attitude of the heart. Each person has different roles to play. Husband have the role of being the protector, provider, and the leader. In the army, we call it IC. Husband is the first IC, the wife is the second IC. So, ultimately, if someone has to make the final decision, the first IC has to make. But you can delegate the task, but you cannot delegate the responsibility. On that day, when we stand before God, husband have to answer to everything that happened in the family because you are accountable. That's why you are the head. So, Brothers, let's rise up and take up our responsibility. 
You know, President Harry Truman have a plug on his table that says, the buck ends here. It means that I have to take the responsibility for the success or failure of the organization. So another picture of submission is the, like the MRT train. If there are two drivers and two drivers are at the end of the train, how does the train go? Which side does it go? So wife, the Bible says, submit to your husband because this is the way God has structured the family. We remember in the Garden of Eden, when Eve was tempted, what if Eve say, let me check with my husband first before I take the fruit and have a bite at it? No. The Bible records that Eve looked at the fruit, it was good for food, and she took a bite after she had made the decision to take a bite, then she passed the half-beaten fruit to Adam. Things would have changed if only Eve checked with her husband. Biblical submission does not mean that you must do everything that your husband tells you to do, even if you know clearly it is wrong and sinful. So this is not what we are talking about here. We are talking about the structure. We are talking about the line of accountability. We are, taking, we are saying that husband have to take up his responsibility in the home in line with the word of God. For the scope of today's sermon, we learn that the submission within a marriage is about the structure, roles and responsibility of husband and wife. This means that the one who have a greater accountability when standing before the judgment seat of Christ is the husband. Be the leader, lead the family. Point number two, the foundation of the family. What is the foundation of the family? Love. For husband, this means love your wife just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wife as they love their bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually show love for himself. The Bible says, that husband must love their wife. It goes without saying that wife must love the husband and also husband and wife love their children because love is the foundation of the family. Love is more than a feeling. That's what the Bible talks about. In a young family, when you feed your baby, change the diapers and care for him, you do it whether you feel like it or not. In the middle of the night, you wake up and have to care for your baby. Love is a commitment, a commitment to do what is good and best and not harm, particularly for your family. 1 Corinthians 13 passage we are familiar with says, love is patient and kind and so on. Think about it, brothers and sisters. Some of us are so generous with kind words, generous with gentleness to our friends, to our colleagues. But when we go home, we are so horrible to our spouse and children. We are so impatient at times with them and treat them worse than we treat strangers. It may be only some of us, but this is our struggle. We can be nicer to strangers than our family. Isn't that true at times? Think about it. There might be a reason that we have this void, that vacuum 
we don't have that capacity to love. Why? Because maybe we have unforgiveness, inner hurts, grievances, or we remember the past argument that has not been settled and we just keep it in ourselves. Like when you argue, do you say, you know, the last time we argue and then uh, what happened? You did this and you never apologize. Dear brothers and sisters, that's why sometimes we find it hard to love our family members. But forgiveness starts with me. We can initiate, I can initiate, say, I'm sorry. We can start the reconciliation process in the family. I talked to a friend who, uh, whose marriage was on the rocks. He went to a marriage conference with his wife and he said the most touching moment of that conference was when he and his wife say sorry to each other. Tears flow freely. You know, sometimes we just can't get over the hurt that happened a long time ago, maybe years even. All it takes is to say, I'm sorry. It's about communication. Love is to communicate in a way that the other party receive it well. You need time, you need patience. We need to find other ways to communicate, sometimes in a non-verbal way. Through giving, through action, through physical touch and showing that you listen to what the other person has to say. It is the way of saying that your feelings and your thoughts are valuable to me. I'd like to listen to you. Shall we go home today and practice it and see the change in our family relationships? Husband and wife, learn to communicate with each other. We are wired differently. Sometimes we may say it in English, but actually we don't really understand each other totally because that's how God wired men and women. So we must take time, effort, patience to learn to communicate and it's a lifetime journey. A home is like a sanctuary that a man and a woman go home and find peace and rest for the soul. Like a sparrow flying away from the storm, back to her nest and find rest, safety and security. There is enough problem, stress and trouble at work. And all you can do is to look forward to going home and find love, peace and acceptance. However, for some, when you go home, there's only strife and quarrel. And when you go home, it's next to a living hell. When once you step into the house, there's hostility, hatred and rejection. So my prayer, God, hear our prayer. Lord, you know who among us are in that situation and need your victory and breakthrough and miracle. Maybe in the marriage, maybe it's the relationship within, between the father and the son, the mother and the daughter. Lord, help us. Sometimes some of us, we don't have the capacity to love. How can I love? You can't find love within yourself. Why? As we remember the friends of Forrest, Jenny, she was abused and molested. It kind of shaped her. The, the person was hurt. The person does not grow up with that fatherly love. So let's turn to the Lord. Let's turn to the Lord to receive 
His divine love, to receive His acceptance, to receive His spiritual hug. Let the Father hug us and love us and accept us. I know of a pastor. He grew up because his father was depressed. He grew up without a father figure. And tr even throughout his adult life, he was looking for a father figure in his life. And it was very tough because he was taken advantage of by several people. Dear brothers and sisters, are you looking for a father love? A girl and a boy need a father love and a mother at different stage of their growing years. You know, research says that a girl who does not have the father's love, she will be easily deceived by men who give her some attention, which she mistakes them for genuine love. In the end, they could be easily taken advantage of. So today, during the prayer time, ministry time, let's come to the Lord and ask, God, fill me with your love because the Father lavished upon His children His love and make us whole. The Lord wants to make you whole. No matter what is your need, no matter how hurt you have been in the past, the Lord wants to make you whole. During ministry time, maybe you know of someone that you know of, he or she, um, she may have an abortion. You can come forward and stand in proxy for them. The Lord wants to heal them and let them feel His forgiveness and acceptance. There are many needs and there are many hurts. The Lord sees. The Bible tells us that He keeps our tears in a bottle. He values them. God knows when we cry on our pillow and wept at night. He hears our prayer. We ask that the Lord will move today in a very special way. Point number three, future of the family. It speaks of the children. Children are the future of the family because they grow up to become the next generation of fathers and mothers. Research has shown that the children in the family, where the father and mothers are always fighting, they grow up with insecurity, being afraid that their father and mother might separate and divorce, or they grow up with low self-esteem, inferiority complex, perform poorly academically, or certain issues like depression may even follow them to adulthood. So, dear brothers and sisters, if our marriage have issues, find help if you cannot resolve it by yourself. Spare a thought for our children, they are the next generation because they grow up to become parents themselves. If the devil can destroy our marriage at our generation, he can destroy our children and grandchildren as well. It has been observed by counsellors that in general, there are fewer men who are willing to seek help and counselling. This may be because of how men are wired their ego may be a hindrance. By the time they come for counselling, the situation may become very serious. More could be done and less damage if they had seek help earlier. So we come to the Lord and ask the Lord to help us. And how about teaching our children at home about biblical truth? The Bible tells us that it is the responsibilities of parents. Talk to our children when they are teenagers, when they are growing up and still under our influence. Talk to them about even sensitive things. If parents don't teach them, then they'll learn from their peers or from the social media. Talk to them and discuss about things like premarital sex, pornography, 
and other moral issues. Discuss with them from the biblical point of view why a young unmarried couple can go on a holiday and share the same hotel room together. Why yes or no? Some of you may say, oh, you know, we go, to the, go there, we pray and do Bible study and scripture memory. Well, uh, for some, it may be possible, but why put yourself in a situation where temptation is there? And also, things like, is it right to be unequally yoked, to date a boyfriend or girlfriend from another faith? And what if you get serious and get married? What happens to the children when they come along? Does a child follow the father to church or follow the mother to the temple? So such issues should be discussed with your children and let them know what is the Bible teaching. The fourth point is to experience victory in our family. God wants us to experience victory. The first point, the key to experience victory is forgiveness. Christ has come to set the captives free. Because Christ forgives us, we need to ask Him to forgive our sin and we are set free. Second, in order for you to be set free, you also have to forgive others. The key is from within us. Forgiveness set us free. And next, God has called you and I to set other people free from the prisons of our hearts. Forgive them. Reconcile with them. Tell them, I forgive you. The Bible tells us not to keep our anger overnight. Don't bear that grudges. Some of us bear that hurt that has been there for many years. Today, let Christ set us free from that pain, from that hurts. As we set others free, the Lord also set us free. The first condition to have God's victory in our family is to use the key of forgiveness and when we use the key of forgiveness to set the captives free, and when we forgive others, we ourselves will also be set free. Next, I use the word doscon, code red. It speaks about the virus being widespread, like we need to wear a space suit when we go out of the home. It's emergency. It's the highest level of alert. Now, Many of our family relationships and some marriages are struggling and facing challenges. So don't just sit there and think, oh, everything will be all right. No, come to the Lord. Seek Him persistently. Seek Him earnestly, urgently. Families and marriage are under attack. Do you know that Satan hate marriage? Why? Because the Bible tells us that marriage is a picture of Christ and the church. That's why Satan wants to destroy marriages. In Genesis chapter 1 verse chapter 2 verse 24, it says, "In this way, man should leave his mother." And woman leave her father, and the two become one flesh. This is the simple formula for marriage. One plus one equals to one. One man plus one woman equals to one flesh. But the world is distorting this truth. So no other combination to this will do. Satan wants to destroy our family. He wants to destroy marriages. We are under attack. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us rise up and seek the Lord for breakthrough. May the Holy Spirit move today and stir up our hearts and say, no more to the work of the devil in my marriage. 
no more to the destructive work of the devil to my children. It stops here because Christ has died on the cross, destroyed the work of the devil. He rose from the dead and gave us the victory. And all God say, all pe God's people say, Amen. Second condition to have God's victory in our family is to turn to God in dependency and sense of urgency. So if, if you know that God is touching your heart and He speaks to you, seek the Lord today. Let God come. Come into your house. Come into your marriage. Come to touch your children. Let Him have full reign in your life. Finally, the key to victory in our family is complete surrender. In order to completely have victory, we must completely surrender our life. Is pride a hindrance to your breakthrough? Is your eager standing in the way? Are you too proud to admit, God, I need your help. God, my marriage, my family need your breakthrough. Come, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a paradox that Jesus says in Luke 9, 23, 24, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will save it. This is a paradox. And this is how it works in the kingdom of God. We must surrender. We surrender ourselves to the Lord. We surrender our marriage. We even surrender our one thing, to be right all the time. I must be right. In every argument, we surrender. In surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ, He will give us the victory. Is it hard to surrender? Yes, it is. The writer of the song, I Surrender All, his name is Judson Wheeler. He was a teacher in Florida Bible Institute where Billy Graham once attended. He wrote this song, I Surrender All, because he was very talented as a teacher, as a musician, and he wanted to pursue his career in this direction. However, the Lord called him to be full-time evangelist and he struggled. Very difficult years. Five years he struggled and finally he said yes to the Lord. And the Lord used him in many nations to win many to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in closing, let us sing this song, I Surrender All. I Surrender All. When we surrender to the Lord, He takes over and gives us the victory. You know, Billy Graham was with, his, with this man on his deathbed and he sang, I surrender all. And there was a smile on his face when he breathed his last and went home to be with the Lord. It is time, dear brothers and sisters, to surrender. Surrender your problems to the Lord. Ask Him, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Come into my situation. Lord, I need you. Shall we sing this song one time? Shall we stand?
Dear brother and sisters, if you want the Lord to come into your situation, raise your hand to God and I'm going to pray for you. Raise your hand to the Lord. If you want the Lord to come into your situation, Lord, I humble myself to you. I need you to give me victory in my marriage. I need you to give me victory in my family. Lord, come into my situation. Lord, heal me emotionally because God, there's a void in my heart. I find it hard to forgive. I find it hard to love. God, today, today I surrender to you. I ask you to come and heal me and make me whole. If this is your situation, you want the Lord to come into your family, into your marriage, into your life, come forward to the altar area and I'm going to pray for all. Come, as we sing, come forward and let the Lord minister to you. There are still others who are coming. We will sing this one more time. As you come before the Lord, surrender your marriage, surrender your family, surrender your children, surrender your pain to the Lord. He will minister to you. The Lord is here. He hears your cry. Even our brothers and sisters worshipping at Woodlands, come forward, come forward. The, let the Lord minister to you. Be filled with the love of God. He forgives you. He accepts you. He loves you. Come. Come to the Lord today. Come. Do not let anything hinder you. Do not let your ego or your pride hinder you. Come to the Lord. Surrender your life to the Lord. Come. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. Come, give us the victory in our family and marriage. Lord, we need you. Let me pray for everyone who come before the Lord today. Oh God, we ask of you, fill our hearts with your forgiveness. As we confess our wrongdoing, as we surrender our life afresh to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Lord, wash away our sins. Fill us with your love once again. We want to feel your acceptance. We are your children. God, we also come before you with the issues, with the struggles in our marriage, in our families, with our children. Lord, we pray because Jesus Christ has won the victory on the cross. We speak the victory and the breakthrough to come into every household, into every relationship. Oh God, we declare that in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit bring victory to our families and relationship. Oh Lord, today will be a day of breakthrough in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. Amen.